Hi, it's Steve. Today is day 23 of this 30 days of video series and water fasting at the same time. Uh, water fasting wise, things are still going well. Um, getting just, you know, still feel very used to it and uh, no problems to speak of today. Uh, Rochelle and I went out to go see a movie this afternoon. I decided to take the day off because I've been working too many days in a row. And uh, we saw the movie um, Lost City of Z. And it was, it was a good movie. I liked it. But uh, it was kind of funny seeing these scenes where, like, there's this one really overweight guy, and he's got plenty of body fat on him, and he's complaining about starving. And, you know, because he's gone a little while without food. And I'm just thinking, poor baby. <laughs> It's like hard for me to have sympathy, I guess, with people who are going without food for a little bit, unless they've gone more than three week three weeks already. Um, but I just found that kind of ironic watching this movie about people complaining of starving, just going a little bit without food. Um, afterwards, we went to go grocery shopping, not really for me per se, but for Rochelle. And I've noticed like maybe it's just the fasting is triggering this in me. But like when I go grocery shopping, I want to just like stock up on food. Um, so we were going to buy some udon noodles there. I love udon noodles and Rochelle makes a really good udon noodle dish. So we, we get there and, you know, she's grabbing like three packages. She's like, how many should I, should I get? And I'm like, you know what? Take all of them. <laughs> and, uh, she's like, it was on like, like, like on a near a bottom shelf. And she's like, well, there's a whole lot of them here. And I, so I look and there's probably like 30 to 35 packages. And I'm like, okay, we'll just take like half. So I think we ended up with like 14 packages or so. Um, <laughs> And, and then I was kind of like, yeah, I should have bought all of them. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's like a weird fasting thing. It makes you like a squirrel, like you want to stock up on acorns for the winter or something. I don't know. Um, but uh, even though I can't eat the food yet, it makes me want to buy more food. So I don't know if other people fasting have had that experience, but it's, it's some kind of weird impulse. Um, normally, I'm not like that. I think after this you know, 30 days of fasting trial, I would love to do a 30 day trial of eating food every day for 30 days. I think that would be a nice compliment to this. <laughs> um, it's getting, I'd say at this point, the, f the fasting part is getting a little bit boring. Like I'm just kind of bored with not eating. Um, you know, I'm used to the, I'm used to the, like the energy output being lower and I'm kind of compensating for that. It does take some self disciplining each day. Uh, not to not to eat, but it's very manageable, and I, I'm just kind of just waiting for it to be over with, so I can get back to having more food and more energy, so I can get more work done. So that it, you know that aspect of like trying to be productive while fasting and not being able to predict how my energy is going to be from day to day, that's a little bit difficult to do. I was doing some in-person meetups with people early in the fast. And I just decided to hold off on those like until I'm done. So I, I'm not planning on doing any more meetups probably till June. I've just been telling people, for some reason, I'm getting a lot of invites now. And I'm just telling people, you know what? I'm just not feeling up to it because I don't know how my energy is going to be from day to day. And it can be very draining socializing with people. So I just said, you know, now I'm not going to do any of that till June, till I'm over the fast and recovered from it. So, um, yeah. So if you're coming to Vegas this month, sorry, but I'm not going to meet up. Um, Hope you understand. Let's talk about today's topic, which is making excuses. It's not a complicated topic, so this won't be a super long video. Um, but, you know, you, you really have two choices in life. You can put your attention on your excuses or you can put your attention on your goals. And there's, you know, always some valid excuses we can come up with for not working on our goals. And some of the more common ones are like, I don't know how and I don't have the time, and I don't have the money, and I got a family to support, and my wife is not into the same thing, or whatever. You know, and it's, it's like we can come up with good excuses that sound valid, and they're really just BS, because people with those same reasons for not working on their goals just say no to their excuses, and they work on their goals instead. So you really have a choice. You can you can validate your excuses or you can just say screw the excuses and validate your goals instead. If you validate your excuses and you feed them time and energy and attention, you're starving your goals. And if you want to feed your goals time and energy and attention, you have to starve your excuses and just say they're not valid anymore. Uh, one way I find that's good to help overcome excuses is just start poking holes in them and, and 
you know, admit to yourself, like other people with these same excuses, they're still working on their goals. They're not giving all their time and energy to their excuses. So if the excuse was a reason for stopping, then it would stop everyone. So why is it stopping you and not other people? You know, other people have had issues um, that you've had and they still overcome it. Like people who have had trauma in their past have overcome it and they've still gone on to work on their goals. Um, you know, take the, the, I don't know how. I mean, in this day and age, that is like the feeblest excuse of all to say, I don't have, I don't have the knowledge and I don't have the skills. Hello, welcome to the internet age. You can learn anything <laughs> that you want to learn. You know, there's so much free information out there, it's ridiculous. And as you start, you know, generating income from your knowledge and skills, you can even upgrade to hiring coaches and, you know, taking training courses and getting all kinds of more information. I mean, it's just ridiculous how easy it is to learn more information. If you're broke, go to the freaking library. That's what I did. I was just, you know, read and read and read. And you can learn so much. Um, it's, it's just absolutely ridiculous how much you can learn for free. The, so that I don't know how thing, I mean, how do you even like live with yourself using that as an excuse in this day and age? That is just absolutely pathetic. I know that sounds judgmental. And to be honest, that is pretty judgmental um, because I think those people need more judgment, you know, coming at them to realize just how ridiculous it is to say, I don't know how, and to use that as a validation for stopping learn how. <laughs> don't just stand there like an idiot saying, I don't know how. Learn it. <laughs> I mean, just, you know, try Google. <laughs> Have you ever heard of that website? <laughs> it's like start looking up the information that you need and, and spend a lot of time learning. People who, you know, don't validate their excuses, they spend a lot of time reading and learning. Um, I think you should read a minimum of 50 books a year, you know, like at least one a week. Uh, and, and some of the smarter people I know, they go for 100 or more books a week. And you can, you know, you can listen to audiobooks. That counts too. So and do it while you're exercising. That's what I do. I mean, just exercising while listening to audiobooks, that gets me at least 50 books a year right there. Sometimes a hundred if they're shorter books or if I exercise more. So it's not a difficult goal to achieve and to keep up in your field and to, you know, learn lot, lots and lots of knowledge. Um, you know, many of the the very successful people I know, they're just absolutely avid readers. Not everyone. But I, I would say most are really into reading. Um, Jack Canfield, for instance, told me he's probably read like 3,000 books in, you know, in the broad field of personal development and human development and transformational work. Um, I've prob I haven't read that many, but I'm probably somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 books in this field right now. Uh, Jack's got a head start on me because he was born earlier. <laughs> so, you know, it's like you, you really want to... Um, spend a lot of effort on education and, and learning um, and, and feed, feed your energy into that and not into the feeble excuse of, I don't know how. That's just absolutely ridiculous to use these days. What about, I don't have the time? Uh, that's pretty ridiculous as well because we all have the same number of hours in a day. Um, we all have the same time. It's just that we're using it differently. If you're saying I don't have the time, I don't have the time. It just means you're not making certain things a priority. Uh, whatever you're making time for, somebody else is making time for their goals. So if you're saying I don't have the time, that doesn't even make sense. The time is the same for all of us. So, like, why even bother wallowing in that? You have the time. You're just putting it somewhere else. And if you're not putting on your goals, then you're putting on some anti-goal thing. So stop investing time in your anti-goals and put it on your goals. And yes, that might mean taking a step back and having to make some sacrifices, but that's what goal-oriented people do. It's, it's hard to find that many successful people who haven't had to make some sacrifices to make time for their goals. You make the time. It's, it's not more complicated than that. You make the time. You stop doing other things, like put Game of Thrones on hold for a bit <laughs> and spend time on your goals. You know, stop, um, stop wasting time on low value activities that aren't part of your goals and work on the goals. Uh, what about no money? Well, that is at least now we're getting into something that sounds a bit more valid. But yet so many people have started with no money and they just don't use that as an excuse. The no money thing is a bit of a trap because you, you're acting like it matters. You're acting like that's a reason not to stop, or that's a reason not to pursue your goals. 
But for people who are very goal-oriented, not having any money is just the opposite of that. It's not a reason to stop. It's a reason to go. Like, I don't have any money. Well, maybe I should set a goal to earn some money. <laughs> that would be a good place to start. And it's like, work on that. Um, don't use, like, the wallowing and, you know, scarcity as an, ex as an excuse to, to not take action. Um, let it be just the opposite. Let, let that pressure you to take action. Let the fact that you're, you know, wanting to move into a more, uh, a more abundant lifestyle, a uh, more abundant situation, motivate you. You know, let that let that be a positive thing. Uh, that's it, again, it's just it doesn't make any sense to use that as a reason not to go. It's a it's completely the opposite. It's a reason to take action if you want to lift yourself out of that situation. And there's so many businesses and ideas you can pursue today for very inexpensively. I mean, my my current business, I started with my, my total investment and in it was nine dollars. That was it. And that $9 was to register the domain name stevepevlina.com. That's all the money I had to spend on the business in order to like start generating income from it. Uh, so I, I didn't spend any more money on it than that. I already had a computer games business at the time, so I was able to um, you know, get free web hosting on the same server. But if you're starting and you have to have the web hosting cost too, I mean, hey, that's a few bucks a month for you know just a starter web hosting package. It's not that expensive. So probably with the money you have in your wallet, you can start a business and have it going for a year. Um, you know, then you just have to use your creativity to you know to get it get it off the ground and start finding ways to generate income. And that combines with that first excuse about not knowing not knowing how. It's like. You can, you know, mix these excuses in your mind and create this package of validation for not taking action, but it just, just doesn't hold water. It's, again, people with those same valid excuses just don't validate them. They just say, hey, I'm going to learn how, I'm going to make the time, and I'm going to earn the money. What about having a family to, su to support? Well, what about having a family that supports you? Why don't you ask your family and say, here's my goal. I would like your support. And if they say no, well, then say, okay, well, then I'm not going to support you. <laughs> I mean, what kind of family is that? If, you're, if you have a loving, caring family, shouldn't there be a sense of mutual support? How is it a family if the support is only flowing one way? You say, you know, I wanna, I, I'm going to support you guys, and, and I want you to support me in achieving my goals too. That's a family. You know, where it's like just draining you and going all only one way. That doesn't sound very family like to me. Um, you know, I, I, I just don't see that as being something you would define as uh, as, as loving and caring. Um, you, you know, it's like it's like, um, you know, like that reminds me of that uh, that character from the original Total Recall movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And, you know, the guy who says, uh, I got five mouths to feed. And, you know, if that's like your mindset, well, hey, they can go a few weeks without food. <laughs> okay, maybe, you know, maybe not, but um, they probably could. <laughs> so, you know, st stop like blowing these, these like little excuses into big things. I, I see people do that so much and they, you know, they email me and tell me why they can't pursue their goals. And, and my response is like, if you say so, but other people are doing it. <laughs> You know, it's like you, you choose where you invest your energy. You can invest in the excuses or you can invest it in your goals. And life is pretty unforgiving about that. So my advice here is to reverse the excuses. It's like stop feeding energy into the excuses and start making um, reverse excuses. In other words, explain to people why you can't wallow in excuses and why you're busy um, going after your goals. So instead of saying, you know, I don't know how or whatever, and people ask you to do trivial things, just say, you know, I don't have time for trivialities. I'm busy learning. I'm busy pursuing my goals. I'm on a mission. Um, don't bother me with trifles. Or just say, this isn't a priority for me right now. Um, you know, say, I don't have time for a job because I'm, I'm working on a business or I'm working on some more important goal. Uh, I haven't had time for a job in more than a couple decades. You know, it's like, how do you get the time to pursue goals? Well. You don't have to have a job is what is one. Um, and a lot of the most interesting people I know don't have jobs. And even if they're not that financially abundant, they all seem 
a heck of a lot happier than most of the employees I know. I mean, something the stat, stat is something like 80% of employees don't like their jobs. So, you know, their time is just feeding into, into some non-goal, some anti-goal, something they don't want. Um, and and it's, it's totally a matter of choice. And, you know, you can, you can tell people who want to drain your time and energy just saying, hey, if you don't want to support me in, a, in pursuing my goal or you don't think I should do this, then don't expect me to invest much in a connection with you. Because why would I bother? I'm going to invest more in people who are supportive of me and helping me with my goals. That's where my focus is. So you can either get on board with me or just stay out of my way. <laughs> um, yeah, it sounds a bit harsh, maybe. It sounds a bit unforgiving. But I think, you know, in order to achieve big, hairy, audacious goals, you really need to uh, just stop feeding energy to all the crap in your life. And you need to start feeding energy to some vision, some bigger picture that you want to achieve. And it all comes down to this, you know, just to wrap this up. If you make the excuse, if you make excuses and you feed your energy to excuses and you validate your excuses, then you get the results of that behavior, which is nothing. And on the other hand, if you put your goals first and you feed your energy to your goals and you validate your goals and that's where your attention is flowing, you get the results of achieving your goals. The choice is yours. I'll see you tomorrow.